Hey dudes, and welcome back to The Bands. As always, I am your host, The Bands. And as you can see, we are back up here once again, which of course means it's time for another What's Happening in Fashion Best of the Month, this time for the month of April. Now I know, I know, this is very late coming, and I do apologize immensely for it. Unfortunately, just due to the circumstances at hand, wasn't able to get it up until now. But the good news is, is that along the side, this one, which you're getting right now, obviously, you will be getting the best of the month for May very soon as well, too. And as always, guys, this video will also be broken up into our three major sections, those being art, fashion, and fashion articles. And just as always, if you do want to skip to any one of these sections, they are all hot linked in the description down below. And so with that, let's just get started. All right, guys, and first up, as per usual, we have our art stories for the month. And first off, I just want to go over three names really quickly, just because they are heavy hitters. You're already probably familiar with their work, and if you're not, then please get yourself familiar with them. And those three artists are Cause, Felipe Pantone, and Michael Lau. All had fantastic exhibits this month and all worth looking into if you've never heard of them before or even if you have heard of them before. But now moving on to the smaller artists here, the ones that deserve a little bit more time in the limelight. First up we have Meg Atkinson and honestly just some really great paintings overall. Very geometric, very pattern worthy, very abstract, and of course just an amazing and totally playful use of color here. Honestly, if any of that sounds fun to you, then this will be right up your alley. Then continuing with these really vibrant colors, but then using them in a totally different way, we have Joseph Lowborough's new paintings. and. These are fantastic for some of the same and some of the completely opposite reasons as some of Meg's before. I mean, first off, we have just this very natural human silhouette that's completely blacked out, and then those vibrant colors make their appearance again, and Joseph does a very nice job of really taking the medium of paint and using it to its fullest. I mean, some of the patterns and some of the concepts he uses here in some of these silhouettes just something I never would have thought of but still come out to be just really brilliant paintings overall. And lastly, and of course I had to talk about him, we have John Cornella and if you've ever been on the internet long enough you've probably stumbled across some of his work before. I mean just these paintings, they're not known for being just high quality or anything of the sort really. What he's known for is his very surreal and often dark humor that he comes across in these paintings and really does a fantastic job of it. If you've never seen any of his work before, definitely dive into it. If you're a fan of surreal or dark humor, you definitely, definitely won't be disappointed. And lastly, for our art section for the month, we do have two articles that we need to cover quickly. The first of which being the Hype Beast interview with Jeff Koons. Obviously he's not for everybody, but whether you love him or hate him, learning a little bit more about kind of the ideas and kind of what's going on with one of the most renowned artists of our time, I always think is somewhat important. And our second article, also another Hype Beast article worth covering, is the editorial going over the auction rivalry between Picasso and Kondo. And it really kind of gives you a breakdown of kind of their styles and how they kind of play off of one of each other even though they are many decades apart. But even so, if you consider yourself a fan of art history and kind of where abstract humanism has gone, then this is definitely worth a read. Okay, and now finally moving on to everybody's favorite section, that of course being our fashion section. And starting us off, we do have three stories, not lookbooks, just stories about major things that happened that are still definitely worth covering. The first of those being the opening of the new men's only CDG store in Nordstrom's NYC. The reason why? Well, first off, the idea of having a full-blown K-1 
carry everything CDG store anywhere in America is pretty crazy in and of itself. But then going on further on that, this idea of having literally a men's only store really kind of shows how much the tides have changed in fashion. I mean, we've talked about it before, about how this year menswear is supposed to outsell women's wear for the first time in literally probably forever. And that is huge for us. It is huge for me, it is huge for you, it is huge for any guy that cares any semblance about fashion. And honestly, I really hope it shows how much the tides have changed and hopefully we see many more of these stores in the future. Then we had LVMH announcing their accelerator program, a program where every year they will bring 50 new brands in and give them six months behind the scenes with LVMH who will help them in the design aspects, in sustainability aspects, in e-commerce aspects, and then give them the chance to collaborate with LVMH brands as well. And whether or not you're a fan of LVMH or this idea of working with a fashion conglomerate in general, I still think this is overall a pretty fantastic idea. Sure, one may look at it as signing your soul away and your brand away to another fashion house, another huge fashion conglomerate, but to me, this idea of bringing in 50 new brands a year, which is insane in my opinion, and if they can keep it up, then bravo to them, but still, bringing in 50 brands a year, and more than likely, knowing LVMH, these will be more high-end brands, if we can see these brands, even like a tenth or twenty of them flourish, then just think of all the new opportunities in fashion we'll be seeing in the next few years, if not the next decade. I mean, how many of these brands will go on to be just really fashion defining? I mean, really pushing the curve in ways that they may not have had they not been able to sign themselves away to LVMH. So overall, I'm really looking forward to this and really seeing some of these brands come out of it in the future. And lastly, we had what many considered the end of Gosha Rubchinsky, although we know obviously that's not true. Basically what happened is Gosha just announced that he is no longer doing a seasonal wrap-up of clothing and will instead put out clothing whenever he feels like it. So it's not going to be season to season, it's just going to be collection to collection. And truthfully, I do think this makes a lot of sense, but it's definitely a double-edged sword of sorts. I mean, just think of the amount of burnout so many people have when doing fashion, when you're doing four seasons a year on top of runway shows, on top of interviews, meet and greets, things along those lines. It can just get mind-boggling. Sure, there are those out there that absolutely just relish in being able to do this, if not for one brand, sometimes two, sometimes even three brands, but that's kind of beside the point because not everybody functions that way, and that's totally fine. Creative burnout is definitely a thing, especially in the fashion world. But at the same time, when you're talking about some of these higher-end brands that really, really make a name for themselves off of their hype and what's in style, what's in fashion right now, you really have to stay up to date. And going from a seasonal idea to a collection idea can really not just slow your brand down, but really kind of wash you away into insignificance. And when you're a big fashion brand like Gosha, that can happen really fast and it's really hard to turn around. Especially when you're kind of a one trick pony in your style, even if you do that style well. Because if you kind of fall into irrelevance and that style that you're part of stops trending, then poof, that could be it. But either way, I still do wish the best to Gosha. I do, even though I personally don't like his clothes. I think he is a somewhat great designer. So best of luck to him. And I'm really interested to see if any other well-known brands end up taking this route as well too. All right, and now finally moving on to our fashion lookbooks. First up, we're gonna take a look at four 
techwear companies that I thought were great this month. And first up, and although not entirely techwear, definitely techwear influence, we had the latest lookbook from South Korean brand Issei, and I honestly thought they did a fantastic job here, blending the technical aspects that they're so well known for with some much more lighter, much more casual, much more toned down contemporary pieces. And in doing that, still adding a little bit of color that made a lot of sense, still adding a couple patterns here and there that made a lot of sense. And overall, a really fantastic, yet still very interesting contemporary lookbook and just can't wait to see what they do next. Then we had brand Rain's newest collection, and honestly, by far some of the most interesting, if not the most interesting, raincoats I have ever seen, if not in a long time, probably a couple years back. Stutterheim did a couple raincoats along these lines, but still not even that interesting. And I just love the patterns here. I love the colors. I love the pseudo patchwork of it all. Even if in my mind I still laugh about how concentration camp-ish this collection looks. Then we had the newest Abazi Rosboro collection and I'll be honest, even though I do like a lot of the colors and a lot of the patterns and even some of the silhouettes here, this is definitely not my favorite Abazi collection. But that's not the main reason why it's here. The main reason why it's here is because this is one of the first techwear brands I have seen really push sustainability in this collection. I mean, yes, once again, this isn't my favorite collection by Abasi Rosboro, but even so, to see these pieces that are so highly technical, so highly intricate, made with up to 80% recycled materials, and or natural textiles such as hemp or organic cotton is really amazing overall because really as far as I know nobody in the techwear industry has even come close to being able to nail something like that. So I really do think this is a huge step in the right direction for all of techwear really and I really can't wait to see what Abazi Rosboro is able to do with it next. And lastly, and by far the most interesting techwear and one of the most interesting lookbooks I have seen this month, if not all year, and that comes in the form of the new C2 H4 lookbook. I was just so blown away and so incredibly wowed just looking at this lookbook. I mean, if you're a fan of techwear, you might enjoy some of the pieces here, but if you're a fan of the much more niche, although slowly becoming more popular, Lunacore scene, this could pretty much be your bible. I mean, everything in this collection just makes sense. The colors make sense, the technical aspects of the pieces make sense, the accessories go well with them as well too. And overall, you just get these outfits that are so technical, yet so aesthetically pleasing that I'm just completely blown away once again. I just, I have no words for how good this all works into that Lunar Core aesthetic. And for as few shoes out there that are really kind of acceptable in a techwear fit, and even less so in a Lunar Core fit, I think C2H4 did an absolutely outstanding job with the Vans here. Really, if you can get your hands on these and you're a fan of Lunacore, then you should really pick them up. They will go with pretty much any outfit you're trying to make. Okay, and now moving into our streetwear for the month. And unfortunately, there wasn't a lot of great streetwear out there this month, but at the very least, I did feel that there were three names that were at least worth mentioning. First of which being, and probably to nobody's surprise, I once again had to include Uniqlo, just because they had so many cool and so many interesting collections come out in this month, but I only could choose one, and the one that I decided to choose was the Katakami Katacho collection, just because of how fantastic it was. Uniqlo has just really been on a roll recently with a lot of their collections, but especially their Japanese ethnic collections. 
but unlike a couple of those other collections, like the Hokusai collection or the Ramen collection, this one feels a lot more well balanced. I mean, we have a lot of different colors here, a lot of different designs, a lot of different graphics, and it really doesn't matter what your style is, if you're a fan of light colors or dark colors, or more toned down pieces, or more all over prints, this collection really has a little bit of all of that, and it's just great. It's just great overall. Then, of course, I had to include retailer Bodega's newest collection, just for how kind of fun and creative it was overall. I mean, here we have a brand slash retailer that's been in the game for well over a decade now and still chugging along very strong, even opening more stores in the last year. And kind of going off of that, we see this style of kind of streetwear that does feel like a throwback to more when streetwear was prevalent in the aughts, especially in the late aughts. We see a lot of comedy in these pieces, which we haven't seen in many years. We also see a lot of brand recognition and a lot of rips they decided to do, which are all very nicely done as well. And as if that wasn't enough, the quality is very on point here. And even more important, the price point is just fantastic and just a throwback to what it was in the aughts and what it should still be today. So I really do have to give kudos to Bodega here. Really fantastic collection and thank you for showing other younger brands, other younger retailers that you can make something this good for this cheap. And lastly but definitely not least, of course I had to talk about the Kith Utah collection just for how crazy it was overall. People in fashion will obviously tell you that one of the biggest flaws in fashion is just trying to overmatch your clothing too much. Like if you're wearing black and red, only wearing black and red, but then overdosing on that. Well, Kith decided to totally throw that advice aside and prove that you can actually do this very, very well. Out of the three potential styles I see here, which I have named the pastel look, the light color bold look, and the dark color bold look, there's just so much going on, whether it be in the source of graphics, or patterns, or fabrics, and obviously, of course, color, that it's kind of just oversaturating the brain but it still makes perfect sense in my mind. There is just so much going on in the graphics and the colors and the patterns and the accessories and even the shoes are so overmatched it's insane. So good job to Kith. I guess with enough time and effort even the most unfashionable thing can be proven fashionable if you work hard enough at it. Alright, and finally my two favorite lookbooks of the month, so let's just get into them. And first up, and probably a surprise to absolutely no one, we have Capital. And really, what more can I say about this lookbook? I mean, every Capital lookbook is really just kind of a journey in and of itself. It's so kind of abstract and playful, and there's comedy, and there's seriousness, and there's toned down clothes, and there's really what some would argue avant-garde clothes as well too. It's really just a mix of so many different ideas, and so many different cultures, and so many different textiles and patterns that it's really just everything you could possibly want out of a Japanese inspired workwear slash Americana brand. But surprisingly, it's actually not my lookbook of the month. As I said, there were still two brands I needed to cover. The first is Capital, and the second, and really deserving of it, is the Penthes. Now starting off, I want everybody to just scroll through this lookbook just once because of just how beautiful it really is. I mean the juxtaposition of the photographs mixed with the fashion photography is just so clear and crisp and vibrant and just makes perfect sense in my mind. 
was another one of the best lookbooks I've seen this year for sure. And I know I'm going to repeat myself a lot here, but a lot of the clothing can be kind of described the same way. We have some very just beautiful, colorful, crisp, clean, vibrant, maximalized pieces that if you are a fan of maximalism or very bright contemporary pieces, this is really the only thing you should look at this season. I mean, most of these pieces in and of themselves could probably be people's grails alone, but then when you take them and mash them into outfits that the pen piece has done here, you would think that maybe doing an all brown outfit or an all green outfit might not make a lot of sense, but Nepenthes really proves you wrong by showing how many different greens or how many different browns or how many different patterns they can put together in an outfit and still make it look like something that anyone could possibly want to dream of wearing. So congratulations to Nepenthes, you are my lookbook of the month. Okay, and finally, we have our fashion articles for the month, and there are a bunch, so let's just get right into it. And first up, we have the five, yes, five interviews that I feel are worth reading. The first of which being from Store Armory NYC, just a very nice delve into what it takes to be or what is a menswear store in New York. Then we have the interview with Alex Kasavin. Sure, not as influential as he was a couple of years ago. If you are a fan of more interesting luxury pieces and especially avant-garde pieces, I would definitely look into this one. Then we have the third interview with Adrian Joff, founder of Dover Street Market and husband of everybody's favorite Japanese designer Rei Kawakubo of CDG fame. Not one to really take a lot of interviews, so if you're a fan of him or Dover Street or Ray or CDG, I would definitely look at this one. And speaking of DSM, our fourth interview of the month with Curtis Henniger, the jewelry manager at Dover Street Market, is very interesting if you're a fan of learning a little bit more about the behind the scenes of working in the business, especially on the retail side very interesting read but if there is one other interview i think you should read it is the fifth interview i have here definitely a little bit more lighthearted, definitely a lot more comedic and that is the interview that was recently done with carl lakerfield the one that got him in hot water not that he would care anyway if you don't know a lot about the man you're probably not going to learn a lot here but if you do know a little bit about him and want to see exactly how eccentric he can actually be, then definitely check this one out. You definitely won't be disappointed. Then website put this on, put out two very nice articles that I feel are worth reading this month. The first of which being titled, Why Clothing Matters. And they kind of go into a brief explanation of what they think and kind of the psychology behind it and what it means to wear clothes and to be involved in fashion. And if you've ever been kind of interested in kind of wondering or kind of coming to terms with why you're interested in clothing, this might help out a little bit. And the second article they put out is how to judge the quality of clothing. Yes, they tend to use a little bit more formal, a little bit more grown up pieces here, but the idea is still all the same. If you go into this article and learn a little bit, then you can kind of use it to learn a little bit more about lower end clothing as well. If you're a fan of quality, this is definitely worth checking out. And going back to the LVMH topic we talked about before a little bit, SCMP sat down and talked to one of the winners of their prize from a couple years back and goes into a little bit more detail of kind of the importance behind it, kind of the attention it gets you, and kind of the help that comes along with it, and really the importance of it all. So maybe you weren't a fan of what I was talking about before, and if you weren't, then I would read this. This is one of the other things that LVMH has done in the past, and it really might open your eyes to, even for being a conglomerate, how good they are for the fashion industry. Then Grailed put out a very nice introduction slash brief overview of Parfums. 
So if you've ever been interested in getting into that, even though it's not necessarily fashion related, it still has somewhat to do with style, so it's definitely worth checking out. Then Quartzy put out a very kind of interesting, kind of eye-opening article on the idea that luxury nowadays is pieces that are worn through time. And basically what they mean is that kind of in this age of fast fashion where pieces just kind of melt and tear and are just super disposable, this idea of something that lasts a long time, the main example they use here is raw denim and how something can become worn and faded but still work is the new luxury. And if you're interested in sustainability or kind of this idea, maybe you're kind of new to it, maybe if you only work in fast fashion, then I would give this a read. It's very interesting and kind of an interesting take on really kind of rugged fashion as well. And speaking of eye-opening articles, the site Dye Workwear put out another interesting article on the idea of dressing for your complexion. And they kind of go into the idea of it a little bit and then they kind of dissolve the myth of the fact that dressing for your complexion doesn't really make sense although I can kind of disagree with it a little bit but even so if that sounds interesting to you then I definitely check this out then hi snobiety did a very nice overview of the homecoming art slash fashion events that happened in Lagos Nigeria and they kind of interview and slash overview a couple of the up-and-coming African designers there. And as I've said many times before, it's really kind of interesting in my opinion to learn a little bit more about fashion from outside of our bubble, if you will. So if you're interested in learning a little bit about some of these up-and-coming African designers, I'd definitely check this out. And finally, Rack put out a doozy of an article on Amazon's newest invention, the Echo Look, which is supposed to be a robot AI machine learning program, if you will, that's going to be able to curate your fashion and style in the future. And they go into a lot, and I mean a lot of different ideas here, whether or not style is machine learnable whether or not a machine would be able to curate your clothes, whether a machine would be able to curate your style better than a human would, and so on and so forth. And there is so much information in here that you may need to read it more than once. And God knows I'm still trying. But if any of that sounds interesting to you, definitely give this a read. Some very interesting and some definitely more eye-opening ideas in here as well too. All right guys, that ends our whiff best of the month. Congratulations if you made it this far. I know these tend to be a little bit on the longer side. And as always, if you do want to see some of the lookbooks I talked about today, read some of the articles I talked about as well too. I always link everything in the description down below. And if you are new to the channel, then welcome. We do a show called What's Happening in Fashion where we talk about art, fashion, and fashion articles every Monday and Friday. Plus we do one of these best of the months once a month as well too. So if you're a fan and want to see more, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, if you just have any questions or comments, concerns, or even just want to talk fashion in general, feel free to hit me up in the comments down below. I am always willing to talk fashion. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching these videos and supporting my content. I hope you have a good couple days. Until I see you next, and as always, until next time.